Welcome to part three of our video series on best practices for building a page in Sitefinity. In this video, Jeremy shows how to use basic bootstrap classes to manage spacing as you're building a page. Uh, welcome back. This is Jeremy with Smooth Fusion. I'm uh, here to continue our walkthrough of recreating our culture page here on smoothfusion.com. Uh, we're going to be talking in this video about um, spacing, uh, using Bootstrap for utilities to their, uh, their maximum uh, usefulness and uh, continuing to create content on the page with it. So um, I'm going to start by recommending that if you are building any site in Sitefinity or working on content, um, you check out Bootstrap's documentation. It is a very well documented um, uh, framework and everything in Sitefinity uh, out of the box is built on Bootstrap. So um, really the biggest pieces that we'll be looking at, um, components are very helpful, but we're really going to be looking at utilities. These are classes that are provided to uh, be able to add styling to things without having to actually write CSS. So makes it a lot easier to create pages without developer intervention. So um, specifically, we're going to talk a lot about the spacing, and I'm not going to go in depth on this because this is a very um, large topic that could be talked about, um, but really we just want to get the basics down so that as we're building our page we sort of know what we want to do with it. The biggest things we want to know um, for margin and padding, uh, we're using M and P. Um, there are slight differences between these two, but we're again not going to get too far into that. We'll mainly be using padding or a combination of two if we can't get enough space with one. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that when we get to it. Um, the sides of the element we're going to put margin or padding on is designated with T, B, L, R, X, and Y for top, bottom, left, right, both sides, or top and bottom. And size is also another very deep topic that we will stay away from in these. Um, mainly we're going to be using either five, the largest, or three, the medium one. There may be some um, different ones we mess with later, but really we're going to be starting with these and then maybe just playing with them to see what spacing we want to use. All of this math, what the spacer is, all of that is a, is a, a huge conversation that can be covered in another video, probably one of the developer ones. Um, but for some examples, we have, um, so M T zero is margin at the top of the element we put it on is none, zero. And that's what happens to it. So if we do ML one, that puts the margin left to the smallest increment. Um, PX2 puts padding on both sides at the second highest increment. And then P3, if you don't put any uh, sides of the element, it puts it on all four sides. So that's all four sides of our element will have the medium size uh, padding around it. And so what we're going to do with that is we're actually going to put those classes on our content blocks. So in Sitefinity, you have this advanced setting. And I really want some vertical spacing between the top of our page and the, con the image from this content block. So you see we have a pretty good gap here and a pretty solid gap here. So we're going to put PY, which is padding top and bottom to the highest number that we can. And we're going to save this. And you can see already we've gotten a little bit more room from here but I still think we could use some more, so I'm going to do it to the image as well. Um, in the image under more options, you have this, and I'm going to do the same thing, top and bottom, because I think we're going to want some space from the uh, block below it as well. So you can see now we've got a pretty good amount of space. Um, let's take a look here. Ah, that doesn't look like quite as much space. I don't think we need to do much space in there. I think that looks just about right. So we're going to save this, and uh, let's preview it. Let's take a look. So let's just, ooh, pretty close. You will notice there is one difference, and it looks like we have some extra spacing under this heading. So the other nice thing about those bootstrap classes is that if you don't want to space an entire content block, maybe you just want to space one ele element from the other, you can come into HTML and just add the class. So let's just set this to margin bottom four. Um, the reason I'm using margin instead of padding on here is just because um, this already has a margin on the bottom of it, all um, heading elements do. So by specifying what we want the margin to be, it's actually going to override what the default is. So whatever the spacing was there, 
it's not going to add to it, it's going to get rid of it and instead replace it with this one. So let's save that. Let's save it as a draft. And let's take a quick refresh. There we go, we got some more space. Look at that, you can't even tell the difference when I switch between tabs, beautiful. So we're gonna go down here to what's important to us. Looks pretty good. Looks like we have that same spacing underneath the heading on that next content block. So we're gonna go ahead and do that on there as well. Forgot my quotes. There we go. So again, we're not really playing with any HTML, we're not structuring anything, we're just using our copied content and just adding this class and then the class we want to add on to it. So we're going to save that. And I believe we should be good to go with that. Looks good to me. So we have successfully completed the entire top section for desktop. We haven't looked at responsive yet. That will be also a later video. Um, and we have our top section. We have two content blocks and an image that match this page perfectly in, oh, I don't know, just around 15, 20 minutes. So next video, we're going to talk about these boxes and sort of how we implemented those um, so that you don't have to learn HTML to make cool looking stuff. So. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions about the topics discussed, please reach out to us through our website. And you can also visit our website for Sitefinity resources that will help you and your team get the most out of your Sitefinity CMS.